wanted to put together a short video that talks about the layout concepts, the layout planning that I've done for a Milwaukee Road uh, Pacific Coast Division layout. Uh, I've mocked it up in this video game called Rolling Line, which uh, I've been doing all sorts of other stuff in. Uh, really, this is ultimately why I started playing that game in the first place, is to do what you're looking at right now, to mock up what will become a real-life layout in HO scale. So this is what I've got. I'm just going to kind of fly through the whole layout right now and give you an overall view of things, and then I'm going to talk more in-depth about what's here and why and the strengths and the shortcomings of this plan. And I'm hoping to give this video to... Um, Jeff and Nick, some friends of mine, as well as um, spread it around online and just get some feedback on people's thoughts about the strengths. Oh, that's uh, that's that's glitched right there. The strengths and weaknesses of uh, this design that I've got. So let's just dive into it. Um, Pacific Coast. Let's start in the eastern end of Washington State. This is Othello. Uh, Givens and Druthers, model railroad design, given is that we are in Washington State. We're looking at the Coast Division. Milwaukee Road is the star of the show. Uh, I'll get more into other thoughts as we go along, but another big thing for me that's kind of a given is I really want to try to reproduce real-life scenes that would be recognizable. So, and you know, ideally, someone who has, is familiar with this railroad could look at a scene and say, I know where that is, with no explanation other than just a picture. That's it. Uh, and so, like this example here, I'm going to flip back and forth between um, a bunch of different images. This would be um, Wade Stevenson's, the, the cover of Wade Stevenson's Milwaukee Road book, published by the MRHA. Uh, so you're looking at Othello. This is the scene by the turntable. Um, and forgive me, I'm going to be struggling looking through a zillion pictures here that I have for reference. Uh, but basically what you see right there is a similar view to right here. So, yeah, if you know this area, you should be able to place this scene. Uh, and this being the eastern terminus of the electrification, uh, a lot of stuff operationally happens at Othello. There's a, engine, a lot of engine servicing stuff. You got a, a roundhouse, a turntable, uh, oil, sand, coal... Uh, fuel, everything all happens right here, as well as a large yard, which is kind of back here, and uh, I haven't gotten super crazy detailed with all of this, but um, you see that there's a runaround track long enough for a pretty long Hiawatha here. This is our really only major runaround on the top deck, which might be one of the first weaknesses that I'm going to point out, but I'm not sure if I see a way around that one. Uh, so this is really like the beating heart of uh, the Pacific Coast um, motive power, really. And this is where Wade Stevenson, the MVP, you might argue, of uh, photography on the Coast Division, lived and worked. So it's an important location. I think this is kind of a have-to-have -have and strong, strong desire to have, especially with the engine servicing stuff that's here. If we continue our journey westward toward the coast, uh, the next location that I've got currently modeled is, I'm going to say this wrong, Smyrna. Smyrna. Uh, I'm not from the area, so I'm going to probably butcher a lot of these names. Uh, this is maybe one of the areas in the layout that is a, a open opportunity, or conversely, is just sort of a big, large, open scene. And what does this look like? Uh, let me see if I can find a picture of this here. Again, bear with me as I flip through a zillion pictures. Uh, here's a shot of Smyrna. Um, you open that in the browser, blow it up a little bit. This is from um, uh, Fred Hyde's amazing book, Scanned This In, earlier today. So really, um, I visited Washington State and saw this area in person. It was kind of blown away um, by just the atmosphere of this area, the desert, how cool the desert is. And although what we're looking at right now is a bunch of beat-up U-boats at the very end of the Milwaukee's existence, the um, you know the gilded passenger trains and the Olympian Hiawatha and the Columbian, they went right through here too. So you have awesome, really cool uh, streamlined electric uh, transcontinental 
passenger trains going through this scenery right here. Uh, seldom photographed because this is very remote, uh, hard to get here, um, especially during that point in time. So yeah, awesome desert scenery, really want to get a slice of that, and that's kind of what this area represents as crudely mocked up as it is. Um, we'd have some cliffs, you know, similar to the photograph you just saw right there, and we'd have a little bit of desert. Right next door to that is the Renslow Trestle. Uh, Milwaukee history buffs will note that um, I-90 I here, the interstate, wouldn't have been put in until, I want to say, like, late 60s. I don't have the date right on my fingertips. Um, the interstate didn't go in until after passenger service was discontinued. So this would be a choice uh, whether you want to put the interstate in here or not. And or how do you feel about chopping off? How do you feel about a small little bit of road and then immediately chopped off in the front scenery? I don't know. Maybe it'd be cooler than not have the interstate. I'm not sure. But in any event, that's a huge trestle. Let's look at a photo of it. Um, here we go. It looks just like this in real life. Awesome scene. Again, super impressive in person. This is the one large steel viaduct that I've got in the desert. And just an, another iconic scene, like, again, if you saw the interstate going under this big trestle and you're a Milwaukee fan, you know instantly what this is. Uh, next door to that, we're skipping a bunch of stuff. We're, we're, um, there's, there's a lot of things that happen between all these places. I skip Beverly, too, because that's also massive and just there's no way I could fit that. Uh, what I've got right next door to this is Kittitas. Um, so now we're switching biomes. In Fred Hyde's magnificent book, which I mentioned previously, the chapter on the Coast Division is called um, From Rain Forest to Rain Shadow, uh, which is aptly titled because it's almost uh, like a biome speed run. You're going from desert to temperate rainforest. And so easing into that transition, we've gone from desert uh, and now we're getting into agricultural farmland in the large uh, valley area surrounding uh, Ellensburg. Ellensburg, I'm kind of just not as interested in. I feel like Kittitas um, is the... It's a small town. Let's, uh, let's look at some photos. I know I've got a good one. I've got an aerial view uh, which shows the whole thing as well as a great article um, that talks all about it. Again, bear with me as I flip through the zillion things that I've got. Um, before I show the aerial view, might be worth just uh, pulling up this excerpt from the Milwaukee Railroader uh, uh, Historical Society magazine talking about Kittitas. So why do we care about Kittitas? It's a tiny town generated by far the most freight traffic of any station in this sparsely populated region. Uh, here was a railroad-owned potato shed, ice house, stockyard, two grain loading facilities, fresh corn processor, small molding mill, diatomaceous earth processing plant. So a lot of stuff going on here. It, even though it's a small town, uh, it's packed with action. Uh, so let's look at it. It was also where helper engines were stationed. This is a really fantastic aerial view, uh, which has got, unfortunately, a page turner in the middle of it. So I've got a little white line going through. But you can see there's a Y right here. Um, I don't have a Y in my representation, obviously. And again, this is like a criticism of what I've done here, that um, the Kittitas could be honestly expanded quite a bit. It has a substation. Right next door to the substation is a station, which the Columbian, I believe, the Columbian stopped at, but the Olympian did not. Uh, so that's cool. There's a whole bunch of warehouses here. I think this number three still stands today. Uh, all this stuff is, I think, mainly potatoes. Potatoes were mainly what's going on in this whole area. We're not far from Idaho. And uh, you can see that's pretty much the whole extent of the town there. It's not, not a huge town, but um, was important to the Milwaukee Road. It's got a water tank and um, I don't know how quickly I have it at my fingertips right here, um, but there are some, uh, there's a diamond in there somewhere. I don't know if I can find the image of it. Uh, 
right now, just on demand real quick. This is it. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, there's a diamond. Uh, there's that water tower right here going into the Y. Diamond, water tower, uh, substation, and, and uh, passenger station right there. So, yeah. I've got a pretty large ice house. I don't think that theirs actually looked like this. Um, this is just a stand-in. And also, just with everything that you're looking at in rolling lines, sorry, just use your imagination. Um, you know, obviously when it's modeled, it'll hopefully look cooler than this. Uh, I've got sort of a farm field in the foreground here. I kind of played around with what should happen or, or how I want to try to use this space. I don't want it to come out too far because of what's beneath it, which I'm not even going to talk about right now. We're just going to get to later. Uh, I've crudely put in a block to model the uh, substation as well as this placeholder building for the station. So anyway, you'd have some buildings right there. Stuck in a couple apple trees. We are in Washington State. Uh, there were orchards not too far from here. So we need to make a transition from desert to farmland. Um, I am also glossing over what you may also call a whole biome. This is, there's a long length of canyon running here, uh, which I won't dwell too long on right now. But um, Thorpe and um, I want to say Washington Highway 10... Uh, runs with parallels the Milwaukee. There's a lot of really cool and interesting scenes in there. Um, let's pull one up real fast just to show what I'm talking about. So what are we what are we not looking at right now? What are we skipping? Uh, here is a canyon scene. So you've got these big steep cliffs. You've got uh, some vegetation, but not a ton. Like right on the other side of this hill is is basically desert. So close to the river, you get trees, uh, but away from it, those disappear rapidly. Um, so anyway, Kittitas is rather small. It would be cool if it were larger. Getting the whole Y in is impractical, although you could have it maybe come into the foreground and then disappear and cut off and still get some diamonds. I've got the I've got a warehouse, a couple tracks to switch. Uh, this is really the only switching on the upper deck. Another possible criticism of this design. And so from here we go into iconic locations. This also is just sort of a placeholder road that may or may not really be there. I just kind of throwing things in to try out see how they feel. Uh, yeah, so here we have Lake Ketchelis with the snow sheds and this should also be another very iconic Milwaukee location that anyone who's familiar with the railroads would instantly recognize. We've got a lake, we've got this uh, um, boulder field and then we've got uh, two curving uh, snow sheds with a big steep mountain behind it uh, that should be unmistakable to anybody who knows this area and uh, I think I got some other photos of it just showing that those sheds were curved um, here's an aerial view lake Cachellus, Cachellus, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Yeah, so you can see these are huge, huge, really, really long snow sheds in real life. Uh, the versions of it that we've got are just teeny tiny. Um, I made this prop mod just to be able to mock this up. For some reason, this is glitched out. It's, show, it's like showing both sides of the track. It shouldn't be like that, so just ignore that. It'll look something like this. Um, and that's that's a nice scene, you know, especially standing back, looking at it, seeing the train going through it. You get like the partial visibility with the slots of the wood. It's it's just nice to look at. I like that a lot. Uh, and then past that, uh, we've got Hayek. So here will be two operator bungalows, and then again a big block, uh, just as a stand-in for a Milwaukee Road substation. And um, these are both on the wrong side of the track. So in, in real life, uh, the substation and the bungalows would be on this side. And in fact, they'd be in the other, to, other order, too. The bungalows would be closer to the tunnel. The tunnel portal, uh, you could laser cut the uh, Snoqualmie tunnel on the top. That would be pretty neat. And then maybe some power lines over the top of this here. And that takes us into the largest tunnel on the Milwaukee Road. And then coming out the other side, I just threw together this 3D model to give a sense of what the Snoqualmie tunnel portal looks like. Uh, let's look at a photo of it in real life. Let's see if I can find it. 
uh, again, bear with me here as I dig through a pile of photos that I scanned today to try to uh, be able to discuss all of this stuff. I know I have one. Here it is. Um, this is from, I think, Under Milwaukee Wires. Another fantastic book. Uh, so here we are exiting... Um, Oh, wow, this is a passenger train. I didn't look too closely at what this photo... That's actually an awesome photo. In the fog, too. Uh, there's a little stream that runs over the top of this. You can hear it when you're standing there in real life. It's tunnel portals, again, super distinctive. You know instantly, the second you see this, where this is. Two side-by-side -side portals. The second one was the tunnel that they used as like a service tunnel. This little tiny thing right there is for like a minecart to bring out all the stuff they're blasting away to make this incredibly long tunnel. Uh, and was just left there when they were done. You know, pack it up, boys. And so, really cool, distinctive area, and I should have jumped back over when the train was going through, but it's really awesome. I'll return to this thought in a second when the train comes back. Uh, to just stand right here, and this, you know, you'd be at about maybe this height would be standing height in the layout room, maybe something like this. Uh, and so to watch the train go in it is really cool, I think. Right next to this is going to be a lift out. So um, this section would come up, and what's on this lift out is simply a fill. Uh, when I was here and bike riding the rail route, uh, which is now the Hiawatha Trail, or the, the sorry, the John Wayne Trail, uh, I noticed there were lots of fills all over the place. So just a really tall area with pine trees kind of growing up on either side. And um, this would be just on, like, um, I'm thinking right now, put it on sort of similar to a drawer where it's on sliders and you can just grab it and push it up. But there are lots of ways you can go about that. Let's not even really think too hard about that. And then, so if uh, the um, Othello engine shop is the beating heart of the railroad, I feel like this right here is the soul. Uh, so this is what I'm calling Mine Creek. Uh, and this is really the focal point. And when you, this is, you know, when you walk in the door to the room, this would be the very first thing you see. You'd be confronted with this immediately, uh, which is what I want. Let's watch this train go into here, into this tunnel portal. It's just pretty cool. How you sort of have some visibility of it as it goes in. This is going to look really cool with lighted passenger cars, too, going in there and illuminating the tunnel walls. Uh, so, yeah, I... As I mocked this up, I was like, oh, that's great. Uh, it's just really fun to look at. Pretty much really strongly want that tunnel. Um, and so this scene is the biggest scene. This is the biggest cost uh, to the biggest opportunity cost of we're devoting a ton of space to this. It's taking up a huge amount of room, but it it is a necessary thing. And um, the reason I say that is because I have two... Uh, pieces of art that hang on my wall inside this room that I'm sitting in right now, which is where the railroad's going to be. It's two California-sized bedrooms, which is to say not very large rooms. Uh, Larry Fisher made this. Uh, it's called Bipolar Zilver Snoqualmie. Uh, you can, obviously, you see the Olympian Hiawatha here. It's just a beautiful, beautiful scene. Uh, in my opinion, railroading doesn't get better than this. Um, so, so cool. This is, you know what you see really when you're standing right here when you walk in the room that that scene his version goes around the corner you know which it does in real life but um i, I, I don't know if that's practical to <laughs> to try to string that huge of a scene together you, your opportunity cost would just balloon out of control if you were to try to actually get that in uh and so on my computer wallpaper for the last few months i've had this image here which is a photograph uh also of mine creek um <clears throat> beautiful image from the diesel era uh, showing a Milwaukee freight coming around and uh, again you know just uh, here you have that type of perspective here and uh, this would be what you see when you walk in the room so after trying this scene in many different positions and now seeing it like this where you walk into the railroad boom this is the first thing you get confronted with uh, I just love, 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 love how this is positioned and fits in the scheme of the railroad. So I tried this trestle in a number of places, and then after putting it here, I was like, oh, that's it. It it, it almost has to be here, because it's just so good. Getting that view, and then also when you're in the room, having this view, too, looking edge-on, so you get kind of a two-for-one perspective 
on this structure, which is going to be the biggest single structure, and maybe should honestly almost go deeper and further down than it than I have it mocked up right now. Right next door to this, and you know, cram, kind of cramming things in a bit, is McClellan Butte, which is an area where Milwaukee Road used too much dynamite and blew off the side of the cliff. And there's actually a concrete arch trestle in here in real life, which I didn't include uh, in the way this is mocked up. And it's, um, here it is. Very difficult to get a picture of this. It's, in a, it's just in an awkward spot to try to get a shot of it. So there's not a lot of photos of it, but this is it. Uh, so that should probably get in there too. Uh, a little concrete arch should be right there. And that would be in the background if you're taking snapshots, which, eh, you know, that these two locations aren't that close in real life, but this is a model railroad. And then I've got over here, this is another thing that, I don't know, could maybe get on the cutting board. This is Betsky Creek. So the Milwaukee has five large steel viaducts. This is the smallest of them and the first of them in terms of proximity to Seattle. And the reason I wanted to include it is because um, when I was there in person and um, when I saw it, it just really struck me. Uh, this is a photo that I took when I was there. Uh, how lush it is. Like right in the foreground there, we got ferns and uh, there's moss everywhere. Moss growing off the trestle itself. Um, it's just, there's, a, there's also a waterfall behind it. But when I was there, the brush was so thick, you couldn't even see it. <clears throat> so this is really, I mean, look at this tree um, over in the corner here. It's uh, yeah, covered, in, covered in moss, this tree. And so it's, um, this is really your rainforest, your temperate rainforest. And so if we're thinking in terms of biomes, we've gone, we've started in the desert. We've, we've gone from rain shadow to rainforest here. Started in the desert, went through agricult agricultural farmland, I currently don't have that canyon running. Um, went uh, to this like alpine lake with mountains being more present through the mountains here, you know, than you know, over these big viaducts crossing them, crossing the mountains, and now we're in the temperate rainforest here. And this constitutes the upper deck. We're at the end. So this is all single track, no, no real passing sidings even along the way. We've got a little bit of switching here at Kittitas. Uh, we've got engine servicing and facilities and a big yard up here, which basically you'd run trains up here. You'd switch things around. You'd have a, you'd have a bunch of activities. There'd be things to do in this yard. Um, so there's operational potential in this, although the top deck is fairly straightforward, minimalistic, just watching trains cruise in a circle, as you've seen with this uh, random freight here being pulled by a couple box cabs. So... Once you get to this point, if you're going from Othello, Othello to Seattle, you enter a helix. This goes down right here, and um, it would kind of wind its way in the back. I'm not sure if there's actually going to be a tunnel right there, but it would need to start going down over here. And then disappear underneath Othello. And so the way I've got this built in the game here is that here we are inside. Uh, there's a helix that goes down, travels around. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy here. Uh, and then it actually pops out, oh, well, before I discuss that, you need to be able to get into the helix both ways. This is a constraint. So if you run a train up from Seattle, you'd come out and go around through all these locations, which are in sequential order. Uh, so that is one thing that I do love about this top deck right now is everything is sequential. These are all proper order. Uh, if you want to leave and go back down and you're running this direction uh then you would go hit this switch right over here near smyrna and you go down and there's an engine house right here i would probably cheat and use that engine house as an entrance to the helix from the opposite direction so that's how you could get into it either way which is an important operational concern the helix comes down, spins around uh, maybe three times, and then pops out for a short section here. And I've just got this mentioned as Boylston. Uh, this would be the tunnel at the, the peak of 
of the awfulness. Uh, so this is the steepest incline on uh, the whole Milwaukee system anywhere, anywhere on the entire railroad. If you look at uh, elevation profile here, uh, you can see that um, Boylston right there is at the peak, and you can see that that's the steepest hill. So this tunnel is, is kind of a famous tunnel. Um, I've kludged it in here. This could be, I don't know, any number of other things. And while I'm talking about the transition between upper deck and lower deck, uh, I have a lot of thoughts on that. Let me return to that idea actually later. Continues into the lower half of this helix, which is now going the opposite direction. Uh, this helix I have as double tracked as a switch, like right inside this tunnel, a curved turnout uh, that you could just either flick with your hand or something on the fascia to either you know use this as storage because the helix is super long you could store a really long train in there honestly or just uh use as control for where you're going when you come out of this so say you're going down you're eventually going to pop out over here so this brings us to the lower deck uh the lower deck has a lot more going on with it and i guess i didn't label it Guess not. Uh, but this is Black River Junction. Black River Junction, I really didn't know much about it when I started researching what I wanted to do. I just thought, oh, it's got a Y. Uh, it's got an interlocking tower. There's a, um, a river that goes right through it. These are all pretty interesting things. Oh my god, the more I learn about this place, uh, this place is incredible. Uh, so this is just a a confluence of every railroad that ran into Seattle. The two tracks on the top, this direction is headed out toward the Milwaukee Road main line. This is all correct so far. We're going to get into what's incorrect in a little bit. This direction would head down and cross over the Great Northern and the Northern Pacific and head toward Tacoma. Uh, this direction where our passenger train is going to come out of in just a minute uh, is Milwaukee Road trackage owned and built by Pacific Coast Railroad which and is another thing I didn't know much about until recently just kind of doing some more research um, is our Milwaukee Road train headed north toward Seattle and we've also got um, the North Coast Limited here on Northern Pacific trackage so yeah in just a few instants hanging out here you can see that um, there's a lot of trains going by. There's a lot of different railroads all happening. Uh, it's kind of calamity in terms of just everything coming in and out of Seattle is all going through here, which is true to life. And so this is a really, 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 really cool place. And yeah, the more I learn about it, the more I'm like, man, uh, I felt like, again, this is a huge scene. Uh, the junction starts here like this is the recognizable angle if you look in photographs you'll see like this view right here a lot which you don't have really necessarily as a viewer you're looking at it kind of this way but I don't see how you'd really get that perspective other than a, a train camera but um, I think it's worth the cost of having this just because of what it allows you to do. All of the myriad things that could possibly be going through here are huge. and It's ridiculous how much stuff you could put on this. If you ran this up into the 1970s, you could run Rainbow Amtrak contests with Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy power. Uh, when pooled power came into effect, Western Pacific engines would have gone through here, Southern Pacific. Um, UP would go up and down this line here with uh, the Train of Tomorrow. You have all the Milwaukee Road stuff that's that you've already seen, freight and passenger going through. It's wild how much stuff goes through here. And so the more I learn about this, the more I'm like, oh man, um, this is just an amazing place uh, and would give me so much stuff to try to do over the years if I work on this layout for a very long time, which, you know, of course you do. Um, I'm not sure which way to go. I think um, let's talk about what's up here first. So... Another huge area, which is, the, so broadly speaking, the lower deck is much more crudely mocked up and modeled than the, than the upper deck is. So I have just sort of these block diagrams of Seattle Union Station, where the Milwaukee Road and Union Pacific terminated, 
and Seattle King Street Station, which is right next door. There's actually a road that runs between them, but I've omitted that. Um, so I'm kludging in a lot here by trying to cram in all these together. And the reason why would be that I currently own a full North Coast Limited, like what you see right here. I, I already have this train. Uh, and technically, it should go to King Street Station. So, yeah, it I have that train already, and it'd be fun to run it. Uh, the Empire Builder would also go here from the Great Northern. I don't have that. It would give me something to collect someday. Uh, I'll mention the train of tomorrow. That would come to Seattle Union Station uh, with the UP, along with a whole bunch of other passenger trains they ran, Columbian and Olympian. So passenger train Nirvana here. Just um, This is a lot of area in terms of... I've kind of tried to cram this in as fast as I can. And it, I'm not married to any of this switching up here. This would all be configured in the most sensible way. I've just kind of thrown it in. Um, so this area up here would be, um, let's see. I know I've got photos to show. Again, bear with me as I look through my pile photos. Here we go. So th this is an example of a photo that's um, just outside Union Station. And so this area would be over here. So there probably would be an overpass maybe that's not currently modeled. How to make these tracks disappear into the background is also something I need to think about. because. I'm trying to make them as straight as possible for the sake of Black River Junction, but as soon as we get here, they need to slam into a pretty steep curve to come back out underneath all this, so they disappear for just a short time. Uh, there's a zillion pics of uh, Union Station. I'm sure you've all seen them. Um, this is maybe one just worth flashing up here on the screen. Um, so in the Rolling Line video game that I'm showing all this stuff in, uh, here's Union Here's the this you can barely see the station itself, but this is the bipolar doing the runaround. So I've got enough track to model this. This is a what they I think use as a storage track. These trains are just hanging out waiting for activity. And then this is there's that overpass you saw on the photo just a moment ago. Um, I really like this Olympia beer giant illuminated sign. That'd be neat to model if I can figure out how to get that in somehow. More on that thought later. Um, this would be the track where the bipolar would cut off and do the runaround. And this is really important because um, they pull the train. This is a stub ended station. So they pull the train into it backwards. The engine's coupled to the observation car, which is fun. This is really a, a cool operational detail that we got to have. This is super cool. Um, so this engine, you know, would be coupled to the observation you uncouple it and then you run where it's going right now you come around and then you couple onto the head end and then you head off uh into uh the rest of the layout toward othello and um i lost my train of thought yeah not too far from this i'm not sure if i want to include this or not but i've just got one slim row of track here there's like a huge amount of warehouses in in seattle uh, just on the other side of all this stuff so like this is you know compressed as could possibly be and in fact king street station with my bad mock-up here might be actually sliced in half or uh, shrunken in size to be able to fit all this in um but it's just really neat that these two were right here and um, being able to run all these different passenger trains uh, and park them somewhere would be awesome so again a lot of space being taken up by this but uh trade-off allows you to do lots of cool stuff and so this is also a very high scene so there's a big tower that says NP on it that sticks up that um, I'm not sure if I have a photo handy that could really show this uh, I don't think I actually captured one of that uh, that shows the full depot scene here um, yeah again it's just an awesome place so this is a consideration here, how tall this is. And there's going to need to be a big skyline backdrop with the Seattle skyline behind all this. So that's why 
Uh, we have a shallow scene here with Lake Catulus that is, there's no depth to this beneath the railhead really, just a little bit. This gives us a ton of headroom to be able to put in this really tall scene of Seattle right here. And, you know, you can see I'm trying to maximize everything as you do when you're designing a railroad where this, this trestle is coming down farther. It's cutting into the, the size right here. And this is a window, by the way, in real life right there. Um, so, yeah, this is a lot of real estate. We've got uh, the trains on the um, coming out of Black River Junction to go around uh, and then come em emerge right here for just a short time. There'll be a few different switches, actually more than I've got modeled right now. And this is where things start to kind of get crazy and fall apart. Uh, and so I guess I want thoughts on how I could do this better or if I could do this better or if I should just go with what I've got, etc. As I mentioned before, this goes to Tacoma right here. This is the Milwaukee Road line to, to the Tacoma station. This right here should go north through Argo Junction into Union Station. That's not what's happening right here. Uh, I currently have, I don't know, like an interchange area right here, which would be good for playability, operability, um, where you could park some cars and interchange between all these different railroads. And then just beyond this, with almost no detail at all, is what I'm calling uh, Tide Flats Yard. Uh, so this is this is the yard that would be on uh, the coastline. This is the large Milwaukee Road yard. Uh, let's see, I think we got a photo right here. This is, uh, yeah, we are here, pretty much at the coast and the coast division. This is an overview of the Tide Flats Yard, uh, standing on a street overpass, and then. Down here, this is, um, people kind of refer to all this confusingly. It's a big area. Uh, the mineral turn backs out of the Tide Flats yard past the Tacoma shops. So this building right here is a super distinctive building. You see it in a lot of pictures. This would be really good to model. Because again, one of those things, you see it, you instantly know you, where you are. This building was nowhere else. I don't, I don't know why it's like it is. Um, also Mount Rainier towering in the background uh, so great potential for a backdrop looks beautiful uh, so tide flats yard really you know i'd say important in terms of layout operation this gives you an origin for lots of cars to you know lots of things come from here can be interchanged here parked here uh it's always like rainy and gloomy in all the photos it's like that's that is the sunniest photo you'll ever see of Tide Flats Yard that I just had on screen right there. I know I have more. Here's one. Yeah, so <laughs> dark, cloudy, Seattle, gloomy. Um, lots of log bunk cars. You see, I've got photos where there's just like endless log bunk cars. Uh, just a, a cool area, although I'm not like, this isn't to me like a need to have type of thing. And um, you'll notice there's three separate trains running on the bottom right now. So that's a really cool part of this design is that there's three separate trains that could all run at the same time. So continuing past Tide Flat, you know, really this is kind of the terminus. This is the end, although operationally you can run past that. This would be Tacoma Station up here. I'm not going to talk about what's in the foreground just yet. Uh, modeling the old Tacoma Station. It kind of goes into the backdrop. I'll come back to all this stuff in a minute. And then in the foreground here is another um, important and recognizable Milwaukee landmark. This is the S-shaped trestle, or a very small version of it, uh, that was in Tacoma. And so let's show some pictures of this. This is just an awesome, uh, iconic structure. Here's an amazing, amazing shot of this trestle, uh, looking down the trestle in the rain, uh, a sun shower by Blair Kustra. It's a phenomenal photo. Um, here's another dramatic shot of it. 
Again, looking straight down with this crazy backlighting. This is from um, the Fred Hyde book again. Uh, with some units just uh, running light over it. It's a very distinct location. Uh, I have saw it in real life before they tore it down. And um, one of... So I mentioned before that I have two big pieces of um, Milwaukee artwork hanging in the room that I'm in right now. One is this, which you already saw. The other one is this. Uh, so this is the bipolar on, on the Experimental Olympian paint scheme going over this trestle. Well, I love this lettering. Olympian air conditioning is hilarious. This is a winter scene. Um, and a cool little line art drawing of the locomotive down there. Nice. Uh, it's pretty neat, too. So they've got the logos in the bridge. And you know, when I had seen this painting, actually, when I when I bought this print of it, it's like poster sized. It's pretty big. Um, I didn't actually understand where this was when I bought this, strangely enough. And uh, I was like, oh, that's really, really unique. This lettering and the slogan and everything on it. Um, I recently, in uh, an issue of the Milwaukee Railroader, found this photo. Um, this is what a what a phenomenal photo. This is great. Uh, so this is the E1 pulling uh, heavyweight Olympian over, backwards with the observation car on the front over this. this is, so this was real. Uh, Olympian air conditioning with <laughs> that lettering. This is obviously not in the winter. Um, but yeah, just a really neat scene. And um, so I'm going to get into a little bit of why I like things laid out the way they are. If you're here and looking at this as you come around the corner in the room, you have that view looking down the S shape. So, like, if you're looking at it like this, I think this is maybe not as... It's still cool, and it's still neat, and it's interesting and everything. But to be able to see it from this perspective really just, I think, highlights how weird it is and how cool it is that, that it is the way it is. S shaped like that, because... Um, I forget the reason why they built it like this in the first place. There was something there that they had to go around. What I've modeled is a cement plant, and in real life there is a cement plant here. Uh, but in any event, operationally, you can take your train from Seattle Union Station, run it back behind, you know, down through the helix, just a small amount of it. You can see both ends of the train at the same time. Come out on the on the line that goes to Tacoma. Go underneath, switch, go over the S-shaped trestle, and arrive at the old Tacoma station. So this is this is all really nice. Operationally, this is what you want. And then there's a huge run around here with this switch where you can run your train around, run your engine around, couple onto the other end, and then bring it back. Um, and get it to uh, Union Station. So these are all good things. Um, where it starts to fall apart a little bit is that um, I really wanted Renton to be in here. So Renton is another iconic Milwaukee spot. Let's look at some pictures. There's street running here, and everyone loves street running, of course. That's a picture of it right there, but I know I have a better one. So let's see, this would be the depot, or near the depot. We're running on the street with some box cabs, this, in this case pulling a freight train. Uh, Hauser Way is the name of the street here if you want to look it up on Google Maps. Uh, and so freights and uh, passengers would have all done street running right down that street. And, uh, oh, here we go. The um, Pacific Coast Railroad also shared this trackage. This is Pacific Coast track, so they would run down this as well, which makes it, you know, doubly is interesting. And um, as a sidebar to that, uh, Pacific Coast... They were this ragtag railroad, uh, which I'm just kind of learning about. There, there are um, Black River Junction. They were almost like a subsidiary or owned by the Great Northern. So they, they here they are uh, on Hauser Way running uh, a Great Northern RS3 right down the street with these banged up coal cars. 
uh, this is awesome. This is so cool. Um, so to be able to run this uh, on the layout would be so neat. And I also love how this sits right now. So like when you're in this room, you have a view looking straight down the street. Or, or if you're in this side too, you also have a view looking the other way down this same street. So like aesthetically, this is great. This view of Renton is ideal to have it right here where both tracks from either end are curving and you have this perfect view looking straight down. So, you know, it, it can't get any better than that. And we also have this really great view looking at uh, the S-shaped trestle. You know, as I mentioned or alluded to before, the problem is really that um, if you want to get to Union Station, you need to go up this way. So this this track should go out to the Walking Road main line. Instead, it could go either that way or to Seattle Union Station. Um, and then if you want to get you know, if you're going this way, this this should be to Union Station, and it's not. So this is a problem, and also Renton is not sequential. This is just kind of tossed in here, uh, you know, and yeah, this is really cool. It's going to look awesome in real life with a model that looks great. I've got, I've got this train. I've got um, Walter's cars and a... MTH bipolar, a few of them. So yeah, this is gonna look really, really cool and really fun. But I'm just kind of distraught about, uh, you know, uh, it's sequentially not arranged right. We also have this area right here where I haven't mocked it up, but the Renton Depot would be like right here. This is all gonna need to be a swing out. So like this little section right here, I'm envisioning this sort of like the door to a bar. Uh, you know, that's like a half door, only the bottom half where you can just grab the doorknob and this whole thing would swing this way. Uh, that could work. Um, but having these three things all stacked up like this is, is you know, a, a model railroadism of uh, train sanity of just, oh, uh, you know, I guess how much do I care? Or how much of a big deal is that to me? I don't know. Also gonna need to be clever about using buildings to block lines of sight to the tracks in the background behind the S-shaped trestle because I want the S-shaped trestle to really be the focus and not some other thing right behind it. Um, I've got like a little tiny version of the Cascadian right now. It's a GN train going over it, which wouldn't have run over that. Um, down here in the corner, you may have already noticed it, the Milwaukee Road had a car float operation. It'd be really, really fun to model that too. And so I've kind of kludged it into the corner here you could you see where the bipolar is going past the station if you imagine that that were a freight train you could uh, run a section of your freight train in here and drop off part of it to be switched by someone whose job it is to just kind of hang out right here with a little probably a little stool that could wheel out from underneath the layout and just you'd park it right here and it'd be a fun place to sit honestly you'd have a great view of all these things going by uh, and while you're doing that you could switch out these cars Take whatever's on the car float, unload it, put it into these little staging sidings here, take whatever your friend has brought in, uh, and put that onto the float to get sent out to um, Port Townsend. So, yeah, this is kind of a little mini game, if you will, sort of jammed in the corner here. There'd, uh, there'd be like an ocean backdrop behind all this. And then maybe the last thing I'll mention is... Um, Milwaukee Road did have a limestone ore quarry, so um, <laughs> these bright red ore cars would be Milwaukee Road ore cars that would originate from somewhere. That's one thing that I don't have on the layout, and how much do I care to have the quarry actually on the layout? I don't know. Food for thought. And then... Um, those of you who might be watching this who are friends of mine who know about the Beer Line Project, uh, there's a whole group of people who know me for um, being super into the Milwaukee Road Beer Line in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, we modeled it in Rolling Line. It's, a, it's, it's currently, the I'm very proud to say, the number one item on the Rolling Line Workshop of all time. Uh, it's a fantastic thing. Go check it out if you're uh, into the Beer Line at all and you've never heard of it and you're interested in that. You, uh, please go check it out. It's hugely, hugely, hugely in-depth. It's a monster. Uh, but from that, I learned about the racetrack, the section of track on the beer line that does almost exactly what this does here. It, it starts out low. There's a bunch of industries down here. This is a tannery on the beer line. This would be um, 
I forget right now off the top of my head. Anyway, the tracks come up. They meet in the middle at a set of switches which diverge. And so you could go up from that, in this case another TIE flat yard, or you could go back down and stay in this little industrial area. Same thing in the other direction. You could go up uh, or you could go down. And so there's kind of this crazy elevation change going on here jammed in to serve a bunch of small little industries, which is just really fun. And um, I thought that was really one of the neatest areas on the whole Milwaukee Road beer line, all of it, uh, the racetrack. Um, such a just a cool section of track that I, I thought it'd be really fun to have, uh, I don't know, beer line west or a little tribute to that in the layout. So I, I've jammed that in here too. There was a little bit of space where I thought, hmm, I, you know, I think I could fit that in, and this would be uh, Olympia Brewery. So going back to that photo that we had before, that Olympia beer shot, um, this could be labeled with all of that. And instead of Schlitz, those cars, these reefer cars could all say Olympia. Uh, and that'd be pretty neat to have like a little um, West Coast beer line uh, as a little um, nod to the beer line here. We also have twos. It'd, it'd be kind of cool to put twos uh, cement, which was the cement industry on the beer line on this layout so yeah that's it that's pretty much all the stuff i wanted to talk about um things that ideas that i had that i'm not showing right now like i mentioned at the start i tried putting mine creek in several different places before putting it here i had it in the middle i had this whole section closed off where you, you'd have duck unders going into both rooms I've thought about the possibility of, you know, this is a door right here. There's there's another door right here in real life. I thought about the possibility of taking off both these doors and putting a door right here because, you know, where I'm standing is hallway. You could do that, although I don't really know how much it would buy you because, like I said, just having this view is so spectacular and kind of what I've dreamt of, of being the feature, the focal point of the layout. Uh that in order to achieve that you're still stuck with the scenario of the train coming and you have to have a lift out and then you know you have to go in it and then you're still stuck with that the li the, the track comes around this way on the other side so i don't know if that really gains much um another thing that i've been thinking about is what if instead of two decks this were two and a half decks so right now i have the the helix coming out of black river junction and then this little um, Boylston tunnel kind of jammed in there for the sake of calling it that. Uh, what if, what if you went up a small helix and then popped out, and then like maybe um, a little bit up the helix, you could have um, Black River Yard, which would actually be awesome. Uh, one of the great inspirations I've had in uh, looking up other people's railroads uh, is uh, Doug Nightswanger had this fantastic, fantastic uh, Coast Division layout, which uh, is featured in Model Robo Craftsman. Here's a track plan, and you can see he's got uh, Black River Yard. This is a curved yard, so how he's got it, he's got it like that on purpose because it actually curves. So you could stick this in a corner, and it would be prototypical. He also has tie flats here. Similar uh, to what I've got on the lower deck, he's got lots of switching industries, all sorts of stuff, busy, all t like tons of stuff going on. Upper deck, pretty minimal. Um, so like if we view the track plan for the upper deck, by comparison, he's got one yard at Cedar Falls, and then it's just all single track running and a couple passing sidings, really, in small industry. Uh, so this is almost kind of cool to see that, um, oh, you know, before I saw this, I was kind of on this approach of top deck is single track mainline maybe a few things to do but mostly just kind of scenic and then bottom deck is lots of action lots of switching more complicated things uh because you know you're going to need to like reach into all this so you know probably want to have like see one of the first things i tried was putting seattle union station over here on the top deck and i quickly realized oh uh, you'd never be able to reach in there it'd, it'd be operationally just so it's such a pain um but like right here is a huge amount of open airspace that you know you could maybe put that yard here um you know renton should actually be off this way so if you went this way toward the rest of the railroad toward destinations east 
you would go through Black River Yard, which, you know, is an action point. Lots of switching, lots of things happen there. And then after that, you'd go through Renton. So, yeah, Renton being here, basically Renton should be somewhere up that way. Renton shouldn't be right there. So, I mean, it's an open-ended question of, like, how much do I care of things not being in the proper order? I have been really banging my head against the wall thinking hard about this. Uh, because this would be my fourth or fifth, depending on how you count it, layout. And as I've gotten older, I understand that, like, oh, man, this is just so much, so much, so much work that, like, you better really think hard in the planning phase and kind of exhaust your options, which is, you know, why you're looking at this right now. So uh, thank you to everyone who has spent the time listening to this. I know I was long-winded. I tried to be concise. But there's just so much I have to say about all of this. And if you have thoughts about how it could be better or different, or why don't you try this? Have you thought about that? Yada, yada. I would love to hear it. Um, again, thank you for watching. I hope you had fun and enjoyed this. And uh, let's talk more about it.